We continue now at the top of Daf Mem Dalad and Aleph Meseches Ksubis. This is Ksubis Daf 44a. The Gemara here is in the middle of discussing a situation where a woman has two Ksubas. On the one that's dated earlier, it says she's entitled to 200, and on the one with a later date, it says 300. And so the Gemara in the previous summit said she has a choice. She can collect either the 200 and use the lien from the earlier date, or she can collect the 300 and take the lien from the later date. And so the Gemara explains why is it that it's a choice one or the other? Why don't we say that one is adding on to the other? And the Gemara says, Hachanan here also, this is the reason why you don't collect, meaning to say we don't assume that it's adding on, because it doesn't say in the second ksuba, I'm adding 100 to the 200, so therefore, what's really happening over here is he's saying, if you want the 300, you have to undo the earlier lien, you can use that second star, and you can collect the 300, but again, it's going to go from the date on that second star. Rashi over here says, "Hachanami mi delo kasev osifus loch meo amosayim kamoi el kasev zman sheni lechal hashalosh meos." Since he's writing a second date for all three hundred, v'lo beloshen most of alashtar rishon. It's not like he's adding on to the first star. Shmami no achilte l'shibuda kamoi. You see that we're undoing that first lien. V'imbas ligvo star hasheni. And if she wants to come and collect using the second star, tigmi mi zman sheni, she has to collect from the time that's written in the second star. Avagave tosevus hamosib bechol ksubas almanam. Masayim, but going back to our issue on the previous summit, when you have a situation of one ksuba, and in any general ksuba you have your original, your base amount of either 100 or 200, and then you have additional amounts. So in that situation, so Kozvin Bovo, Seifis Law, Maida Tikkun Rabbanan, there you're writing in that it's additional to what the Rabbanan were Masakin. That's why you have two, there you actually do have an additional on to the uh, original amount of the ksuba. There's an add on, and that's what it actually says in the ksuba, so you can't and compare the two situations. And the Gemara continues, Omar Mar, the master said, Iboy Bahai Gavyo, Iboy Bahai Gavyo. Again, going on the situation where she has two ksubas, she can choose which one she wants to collect with. Rashi says, Omar Mar, Ad Rav Hunakoy. We're going on Rav Huna's statement. The Omar and Bos Ligvos, Masai and Mechulu. Again, he says, if she wants to collect 200, you go by that date. If she wants to collect 300, she goes by the other date. And the Gemara says, Leimo Pliga de Rav Nachman. Let us suggest that this statement of Rav Huna argues on that which Rav Nachman said. The Yomar of Nachman, because Rav Nachman said, Shnei Shtaros Hayotzin Bozeh Acharzeh. Let's say you have a situation of two documents, two Shtaros, and they come one after the other. Rashi over here says, Shnei Shtaros Shel Soda Achas. Let's say you have a situation on one field, two separate documents, Shel Mecher or Matana, either it's a sale or it's a gift. V'chazvan Ruvain L'Shimon Echad Benisan V'echad Besivan. And Ruvain wrote over this piece of land to Shimon two times. And one is dated in Nisan, and one is dated in Sivan. And so that's the situation over here according to Rav Nachman and Rav Nachman says Bitel Sheni Esarishon what happens is is that the first star actually completely nullifies completely undoes the uh, the second star rather completely nullifies the first star Rashi over here says Bitel Sheni Esarishon Vim Kosov Lo Achrayus Vitarfu Amimenu Ein Gova Elamizman Sheni let's say there's a lien on the property so the halacha is you only collect from the second date Vahachanami Neymo Rishon Botele Da Achle Lishibuda Kameh so again if, if Rav Nachman was saying this halacha so by the woman who has two ksubas, we should say the same thing. We shouldn't say you can collect with either one. We should say that the second one is completely mevatel, the first one. And so the Gemara says, Lav No, wasn't it said on this statement of Rav Nachman, where Rav Nachman says, Bitel Sheni Asarishon, it was said on that, Amar Papa, that Rav Papa said, Umod Rav Nachman, that Rav Nachman admits, the Osef Bey Dikla Letosef is Kasve, that if something was added, let's say even one palm tree was added into the second document, so then we assume that it's not nullifying the first document, then we assume that the reason why he wrote a second document was to add something. Here also, in this case where she has two ksubas, she has one that says 200, one that says 300. The point over here is to add something, and in that, in that situation, we don't assume that there's a nullification. Rashi over here says, the Mosef Badikla Bishtar Basra. Again, if the second one adds something like a palm tree, Latosephus Kasve Viloliva Tulilakama, then we assume it's not to nullify it. Ella de Imizman Shani Asilamigvi Likni Iker Vitosephus. The idea is exactly like we said over here by Ksuba. If you want to go by the second time period, the second date, then you collect the main thing and the additional. Vinichale Bekamwa, Mishum de Kodim, Lo Likni Tosephus. If he wants to use the first star, then he won't get that which is additional. Vahanami Ha Osef La de Kasav La Shalosh. Here also there was additional, meaning it was a different amount. Here it was 300, and there it was 200. 
And the Gemara continues, Pshita is obvious, Rishon b'mecher v'sheni b'matana. Let's say you have a situation where, again, a person has a, two documents regarding one field, regarding the fact that he is in possession of a particular field, and the first document is written to him in the form of a sale, and the second document is written to him in the form of a gift, that it's being gifted to the individual. So then it's certainly true, liyafos kochu de of lay. The reason why the seller wrote a second document and formulated it as a matana was in order to strengthen this person's position in the field. Misham dina debar mitzvah, in terms of the halacha of the person who owns the neighboring field. Rashi over here explains, Leafos kocho kasve, the reason why he wrote it was to strengthen his position. V'inami lo osefe, and even if he added nothing to the second document, in other words, they're identical documents, the only difference is one says it's a sale, one says it's a gift. Lo bita lesarishon, the point over here is, is that it doesn't nullify the first document. That first document, that date in that first document is still considered accurate. Eladolo lesi b'nei mitzra l'irure ala. It's just an order, the reason why he wrote it as a gift was in order that the people, the neighboring people, they don't protest the kaim alon matana less be misham dina de bar mitzvah because the halacha is when it comes to a gift, there's no halacha bar mitzvah. The halacha bar mitzvah says that if a person puts a field up for sale, the people who are the neighbors, they get the first rights to purchase that field because it's advantageous for them to buy a field that's next to their own field. And that applies specifically by a sale. So I can't sell it to somebody else. I have to offer it to the neighbor first. And the reason for that is, is that this somebody else who I'm offering it to, they could go buy a field anywhere. So therefore, it's again, it's it's considered better for the neighbor, and he gets the first right to buy it. But when it comes to a gift, that's not true. If I gift it to somebody, so then we don't say that the person could go find a gift somewhere else. He can't find a gift anywhere. And so therefore, there's no halacha bar mitzra. So the point over here is, is if that the person has a second document, and that document is in the form of a matana, that wasn't meant to nullify the first document. All that was meant to do was to, to eliminate the possibility of a complaint from the bar mitzra, from the person who is the neighbor. Neighbor. And the Gemara continues, And this is certainly true. Let's say the first document and the first document is a gift, and the second document is a sale. There, for sure, it's not meant to nullify. Because the reason why he wrote a second document and he formulated it as a sale was because of the halacha in terms of the Balchov. And Rashi over here explains, What he's t- telling him is as follows. Let's say his Balchov, meaning the person who's selling the field to the other individual, if his Balchov comes along and collects it because he has a lien on the property, Vitarev Lemine, and he collects it from him, so now the purchaser is going to lose out on his field. So, Kibel Olav Achrayus Bishtar Asheni, by writing it instead of giving it as a gift, but instead he writes it as a sale, what he's really saying is the seller is telling the buyer, I'm taking Achrayus. If this is taken away from you by somebody who has a lien on my property, I'll pay you back. I'm going to pay you back that money that's written into this document. So, in other words, the Gemara is saying, there also. That second document that's written and formulated as a sale, that's not meant to nullify the first. It's just meant to give the buyer security to know that if the field gets taken away, he will get reimbursed. And again, that's what it means. The Amrina Misham Dina, the Balchov with the cost of Cain. He, the reason why he wrote him a second star was in order to protect him in case there's a Balchov. However, if you have a situation where both documents are identical and both of them, let's say, are written as a sale or both of them are written as a gift, so Bitel Shani so in that situation, we assume that the second star is really meant to nullify the first star. The person means to say that first star no longer applies. And the Gemara says, my time, well, what is the reason? As Rashi says, my time of Beetle, why is it that the person would nullify the original star and give a second star? What's the reason behind doing such a thing? And to that, the Gemara has a machlokis. Raphram, Amar Raphram says, Amor Oduye Odile. What we say is that there was an admission over here. Rashi over here says, Odile Bal Hashtar. What's happening is that the person who, who has the star is admitting, Shaharishon Mizuyef Haya, that the first one was actually forged. And therefore, he's agreeing to take the second star, so to speak, and he's going to collect from the second time period. By having over here a second document, what they're effectively doing is, is they're admitting that the first document was a forged. And so the second document is the accurate document in terms of the ownership of this property. And Rav Ravacha says a different explanation of what's wrong in terms of the first star. What's actually happening over here, it's not an admission that the first star was Mizuyev, that it was a forgery. What they're simply saying is, is that the lien that comes from the first star, we're being mochel that lien, and instead we're saying we're going to have the lien instead is going to be from a later date.
And the Gemara says, My Beinai, what's the difference between these two explanations in terms of why the first star is no good? What is the difference if we say it's no good because it was a forgery? Or if we say it's no good because the person was Mochel the lean? And the Gemara says there's a Nafkamin as follows. Ika Beinai, the difference between them could be as follows. Orue Sahade. Rashi over here says, Orue Sahade Hachasumim Berishon. Let's say you have a situation where you want to know whether the witnesses that are signed on the first star are they considered now like false witnesses and they can no longer testify. Lerafram Psulim, that's exactly the Nafkamina. According to Rafram, we're saying that this first star, because it was nullified, is actually a forgery. That would also mean the Adim signed on the first star are no good. And the Ravacha Ksherim, according to Ravacha, we're not saying there's anything particularly wrong with the first star. We're just saying that the lien has been forgiven by the first star, and therefore the Adim would still be Kosher Adim. Another Nafkamina is Vilishalume Pire. Let's say he wants to pay back the fruits that he took. Rashi over here says, Vilishalume Pire, Sheochal Lokeach, Bainsman Rich. Let's say the purchaser, he consumed fruits from the field between the date on the first document and the date on the second. So Lerafram Meshalem, according to Rafram, that first document was a total forgery. Therefore, he has to pay back those fruits. And again, according to the second opinion, according to Ravach, it was not a forgery. It's just a situation. It's just a difference in terms of the lien. And finally, Ulataska, the Taska refers to the taxes. Rashi over here says, Ulataska, Lefroa Masa Karko You have to pay the property tax to the king. Mizman Rishon Lizman Sheni from from the first time period to the second time period, who pays that tax? Lerafram ala mocher lefro. According to Rafram, the seller is the one that has to pay that tax because that first document was a total forgery. Leravach ala lokeach lefro. But according to Ravacha, the first document was not a forgery and therefore it's upon the purchaser to pay that tax. And just to clarify over here, what does it mean that the purchaser forgave the liens from the first day? What it means is very simply, let's say the purchaser bought this property and it's taken away from him. Let's say it's taken away by some creditors of the seller. And so now the purchaser wants to go to the seller. He wants to be reimbursed. And he has a lien on the seller's property in order to be reimbursed. But what date do we go by? Do we go by the earlier date, all of the property the seller had at the earlier date? Or no, we go by the later date. Let's say there was property that the seller got rid of in the interim. So then we go by the later date and we say it's only on those properties that he has the lien, and that's exactly what we're saying over here. We're saying that if the lien was forgiven on the first uh, on the first document, that's why the second document was written. And the Gemara continues, My suba. So what is the final Psaq halacha regarding suba? In other words, from what time period, from what date do we say that there's a lien in terms of the ksuba? Tashma coming here, proof. The Yomar Rav Yudah Mar Shmuel, Mishum Rav Elozor Rav Yishimin. Rav Yudah says that Shmuel said in the name of Rav Elozor Rav Yishimin, Mona Masayim Min Ho'eris and Vitosefes Min Anisu. And again, this issue was discussed in the previous Amud. So he says that the 100, the 200, that base amount, that goes from the date of the Arison, of the betrothal, and anything that was added on, it goes from the time of the Nisu in the marriage. And the Chachamim say, Echod zev echod zev min hanisuin. in both situations, meaning to say whether it's the Monim Masayim, whether it's the Tosefes, it goes from the Nisuin. And that is indeed the Halacha. Echod zev echod zev min hanisuin. We always follow the date of the Nisuin of the marriage. And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah, Hagiora Shinis Gaira Bito Imo. Let's say you have a convert, and her daughter converts along with her. Vizinsa, and then she commits adultery, referring to the daughter. Harezu Bechenek. So the punishment is going to be Chenek in such a situation, strangulation. Rashi over here says, Vizinsa, Be'erisin Vihinar. We're talking about a situation where this daughter, when she is betrothed, and she is a Nara at that stage in her life, so then she commits adultery. So the halach is Chenek. Harezu Bechenek. Vihafila Nis Gaira Pchusmi Basgim Moshanim. Rashi says even if the conversion was done when she was less than three years old, the Vecheskas Basulahi, that in such a situation she's considered a Basula, she's considered a virgin. So normally the punishment should be by a situation of a Narahama or Rasa, let's say she commits adultery, the punishment should really be Skila. But here it's Chenek. Why? Because when does it say that she gets Skila by a Narahama or Rasa? That's talking about by a Jew, not by a convert. It uses that term Kiosa Nevala. Israel, and that's why in this situation of the Gioras, the punishment is only going to be Chenek. And the Mishnah continues, Ein la lo Pesach beis ha'av velo me'asela. Furthermore, in this situation of a Gioras, there's no halach of the Pesach beis aviha. They used to bring her to the entranceway of the house of her father. And also there's no halach of the fine of me'asela that refers to the fine of a motzi shemra. Rashi over here says, Ein la lo Pesach beis aviha, Ein sarach lo el Pesach beis aviha. There's halacha that when it comes again to the Narahamo Rasa who commits adultery, you bring her el Pesach beis aviha. Again, that only applies 
applies be Yisrael. That doesn't apply over here. And furthermore, v'lo mea sela, there's no halacha of a hundred sela. Im ninsa bal shakran, again, let's say the husband's claiming she committed adultery, but he's lying. Ve'ed of zomim in dekula parsha be Yisrael ksiva, so there's a halacha there that he pays a hundred sela. If he turns out to be motzi shemra, it turns out that he's lying. And again, that halacha only applies to Yisrael. It doesn't apply over here by the situation of a gioris. And the Mishnah continues, Let's say the pregnancy, when the mother converted, so at the time that she became pregnant, she wasn't yet Jewish, she hadn't yet converted. But at the time of the birth of this girl, at that time already the mother was already Jewish, so then, So in that situation, the daughter is considered Yisrael, and therefore the punishment is going to be Skila. Rashi over here says, The Gemara is going to learn this out, uh, where we have the source for this idea. However, However, the Mishnah continues, even in this situation where it was Leidasa Bikdusha, Vienla Lo Pesach Beisoav, there, there is no halacha of Pesach Beisoav, Velo Meyasel, and again, there's no halacha of a hundred sela. And the Mishnah continues, Haisa Horasa Vileidasa Bikdusha, let's say the pregnancy and the birth, the mother had already converted, so in that case, Harehi Kebas Yisrael Lechol Devorah, there, she's going to be considered like a Bas Yisrael in terms of all halachas, as Rashi says, Harehi Kebas Yisrael Lechol Devorah, V'yeshla Pesach Beisav, Umei Aslam, there's going to be the halacha Pesach there's going to be the halacha meyaslaim, and of course also, there's going to be the punishment of skila. And the Mishnah continues, Yesh la'av v'ein la Pesach beis av. Let's say the girl, we're talking about a regular Yisrael situation over here. Let's say she has a father, but there is no Pesach beis av. There's no doorway by the father's house. Rashi over here says, Kegon she'ein lo bias. Let's say, for example, the father has no house. O v'Yisraelis kamayri. We're talking about a regular situation of a Yisraelis. So again, there is no Pesach beis av. Or let's say the other way around, Yesh la Pesach beis av. Let's say there is an entryway by the house of the father. Ve'ein la'av, but there is no father. Harezu beskila. Still, the punishment of applies lo nemar pesach beis av elul mitzvah. The fact that the pasuk says pesach beis av, it's not a requirement for the skila. It is just a mitzvah to bring her al pesach beis avia. And we'll continue with this discussion in the next video on daf mem dalid amid beis.